The Earth and the Moon are more than just rocks floating in space. From tides and the length of our days, to the light we get at night, and even the stability of the climates we live in. The Moon has a surprisingly big impact on life, even if we hardly notice it. Let's start with the Moon pull on Earth. The tidal force decreases, with the cube of the distance between the Earth and the Moon. That might sound technical, but it is huge for life. Even a small shift in distance would change the tides dramatically. Coastal ecosystems, fishing, early ports, and even the first human settlements relied on tides, being just the way they are. If the moon had been closer or farther in Earth history, the map of where humans could live comfortably might look completely different. Right now, the Moon is slowly moving away from Earth at about 3.8 centimeters per year, and the pace of that movement slows over billions of years. This tiny drift gradually lengthens our days by approximately 2.3 milliseconds per century. You do not notice it, of course, but over millions of years, this subtle lengthening has helped shape the natural rhythm of life on Earth. Our sleep patterns, the behavior of animals, and even the timing of plant growth evolved under this slowly shifting day and night cycle. Over 4.5 billion years, the moon distance from Earth grew by about 19 times. From roughly 20,000 kilometers to today, 384,000 kilometers. When the moon was much closer, its tides were massive repeatedly flooding and exposing coastlines. Scientists suggest that these cycles may help early chemical reactions toward life. Fast forward billions of years, and calmer tides have allowed fertile shores and river deltas to form places that humans eventually turned into farms, towns, and cities. energy involved in tides is substantial. Earth currently loses approximately 3.75 terawatts of energy through tidal friction, and in some models this loss scales roughly with the sixth power of the tidal bulge height. That means even small differences in ocean shapes or continental layouts can shift global energy redistribution significantly. This energy drives ocean currents and influences climate patterns, which humans depend on for food, water, and habitable regions. Moonlight also depends on distance. A full moon at perigee, when the moon is closest to Earth, appears about 30% brighter than at apogee. Before electric lights existed, this brightness difference was important. It helped people see at night, travel safely, hunt, or gather. A typical full moon produces roughly 0.25 lux. 
Doubling the distance between Earth and the Moon would make it four times dimmer, and quadrupling the distance would make it 16 times dimmer. Dimmer nights would have changed animal behavior, human travel safety, and nocturnal activities. Distance also directly affects tides. If the moon were twice as close, tides would be eight times stronger. That would have made many present-day coastal cities uninhabitable and affected agriculture near the sea. If the moon were 10 times closer, tides would be roughly 1,000 times stronger, essentially destructive on a planetary scale. The fact that the moon sits where it does has allowed human civilization to flourish along coasts instead of being constantly battered by enormous tides. On the moon itself, gravity is about one-sixth of the Earth gravity, and it decreases with the square of the distance from the moon's center. Low gravity is important for anyone considering living or working there. Muscles, bones, and fluids behave differently, and astronauts must carefully plan long-term exposure. The escape velocity from the moon is 2.38 kilometers per second, and if the radius were halved, this value would double. The current escape speed makes launches from the moon much easier than from Earth, which could be important for future industry and exploration. Moonquakes also follow a clear pattern. Their frequency decreases exponentially with magnitude, following the Gutenberg-Richter law. The largest recorded moonquake reached about 5.5 on the Richter scale, and larger ones are essentially impossible because the moon-cold, rigid crust cannot store enough stress. Cosmic ray flux there is about 300 times higher than on Earth because the atmosphere normally blocks so much radiation. Every seven kilometers of air roughly halves the flux, but with no atmosphere, the lunar surface receives the full dose. Solar wind particles also hit the moon at nearly full strength because the flux at one astronomical unit from the sun does not vary much. Anyone living or working there needs strong shielding, carefully designed habitats, and protective clothing. 
temperature swings are extreme. At the equator, the moon goes from minus 173 degrees Celsius at night to plus 127 degrees Celsius during the day. Without an atmosphere, heat comes and goes very quickly, meaning thermal control systems are essential for equipment, habitats, and suits. The moon interior contributes very little warmth, about one ten thousandth of Earth. Because radioactive decay slows over time, nighttime is bitterly cold and there is no internal heat to rely on, so life support systems must be fully engineered. The moon orbital angular momentum increases slowly as Earth rotation slows. Over extremely long timescales, this interaction pushes the system toward equilibrium. In roughly 50 billion years, Earth and moon could reach a mutual rotation of 47 days. Humans will not be around to see it, but it demonstrates the long-term stability of the system. Finally, the Roche limit for a rigid body near Earth is around 2.4 lunar radii, and tidal forces increase steeply inside that distance. This is important for understanding the potential breakup of objects in orbit, from natural rocks to artificial satellites, and for future space operations near the Moon. Taken together, all these factors, tides, day length, moonlight, radiation, temperature swings, orbital motion, have quietly shaped the conditions in which humans evolved and continue to live. The moon is not just a rock in the sky, it is a partner that has influenced our planet and our species in ways we are only beginning to understand. Thank you.